In this section, we're going to look at uh, half angle formulas. I've written the three half angle formulas over here on the board. Sine of A over 2, A over 2, that's why it's called a half angle formula. Sometimes you see it written sine of 1 half A, but 1 half A and A over 2 are the same thing. Plus or minus the square root of this quantity, 1 minus cosine A over 2. The cosine A over 2 formula is very similar. It's 1, it's plus or minus the square root of the quantity, 1 plus cosine A over 2. Then tangent A over 2 has two forms. One where I have 1 minus cosine A over sine A, and the other is sine A over 1 plus cosine A. And I think you've actually proved that these two expressions are equal previously when we were working with identities. Now, the plus or minus sign out in front of the square root here means that we have to determine the algebraic sign of these quantities ourselves based on what we know about the quadrant in which the original angle A itself terminates. If we know where A terminates, we can find out where A over 2 terminates. So let's go to the board now and look at our first problem. We want to, again, memorize these formulas. So in this case, I have sine of B over 2. I know that what I'm going to want is the quantity plus or minus, or plus or minus the quantity, 1 minus cosine b all over 2. So all I need here is cosine b. I have sine b equals negative 1 third. I need cosine b. So if sine b is negative 1 third, cosine b, um, let's see, is going to be the square root of 1 minus sine squared. That's 1 minus negative 1 third squared, which is 1 ninth. That's the square root of 9 ninths minus 1 ninth, which is 8 ninths. Now, if I take the square root of 8, I get 2 square root 2. If I take the square root of 9, I get 3. Now, if b belongs to quadrant 3, then the cosine is going to be negative. So I need to put a negative sign in front of each of these. OK, so I have plus or minus square root of 1 minus 2 square root 2, that's 1 minus negative 2 square root 2, so plus over 3, all divided by 2. Uh, so let's see, I just simplify this real quickly uh, mentally. <clears throat> this is 3 over 3 plus 2 square root 3 over 3. So I have 3 plus 2 square root 2 all over 3 divided again by 2. That's going to give me plus or minus square root of 3 plus square root 2 all over 6. So this is 3 over 3 plus this, then I divide again by 2, and that gives me 6 in the denominator. So 3 plus 2 square root 2 all over 6. Now, I need to determine what algebraic sign this quantity is going to have. So I need to know that b itself is in quadrant 3. So let me take that down here. If b is in quadrant 3, then 180 degrees, less than or equal to b, less than or equal to 270. Now the question is, where is b over 2? What quadrant does b over 2 terminate in? So I'll divide each of these quantities by 2, and that gives me 90 degrees less than or equal to b over 2, less than or equal to 135 degrees. Well, that means that b over 2 belongs to quadrant 2. It's between 90 degrees and 135 degrees. In quadrant 2, the sine function is negative. I'm sorry, the sine function is positive, so I'll take the positive sign and delete the negative sign. So my answer for number 1 is 3 plus 2 square root 2 over 6. Now, I know the writing's a little small. It's a little bit hard to follow. Uh, let's see if I can do a better job on the next one. Let's look at cosine b over 2. Same type of formula. But now I know that b over 2 terminates in quadrant number 2. So because it terminates in quadrant number 2, I'll choose the correct algebraic sign to begin with. It's negative, because the cosine function is negative in quadrant 2. That will save me a little bit of time. Now, I know the formula is 1 plus cosine b, which is negative 2 square root 2 over 3. And that's all divided by 2. So I have to substitute this value for cosine b in. That's this negative square root 2 over 3 that I found up here. Now let's see, 3 over 3 minus 2 square root 2 over 3, all divided by 2. That's going to give me negative square root of 3 minus 2 square root 2, all divided by 6. 
Now, if we want, we can find a decimal approximation to this by using our calculators, but I'm going to leave it in exact value form right now. So you can compare these two. The cosine of b over 2 comes out negative 3 minus 2 square root 2 over 6. The sine of b over 2 came out positive 3 plus 2 square root 2 over 6. So very similar answers right here. If we squared this, add it to the square of this, we would end up with 1 because sine squared plus cosine squared of the same angle is equal to 1. Let's look now at tangent. Tangent of b over 2, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, maybe I'll use my formula over here where I have 1 minus cosine a all divided by sine a. And let me change that to b over b. Okay, so 1 minus cosine b over sine b. I have 1 minus a negative 2 square root 2 over 3, so plus 2 square root 2 over 3 all divided by the sine of b, which is negative one-third. Now, a little algebraic simplification on that, and we'll have the same answer that's in the book. I've run out of space, though, so I don't want to do it. What I want to do now is go and look at uh, some more problems that involve finding sine, cosine, and tangent of um, a over 2, and see if we can compare with sine and cosine of maybe 2a, twice an angle, maybe a sum formula also. So let's look at the formulas we have in this chapter so far. Here's the next problem. Suppose sine A is 4 fifths, A belongs to quadrant 2. Suppose sine B, another angle, is 3 fifths, and B is in quadrant 1. Can we find sine A over 2, secant 2A, cosine B over 2, and sine A plus B? So I have a half angle formula, double angle formula, plus a reciprocal formula, half angle formula, and the formula for the sine of a sum. So let's see. To begin with, sine of A over 2, that's going to be plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine a all over 2. Well, I don't have cosine a, I have sine a. So sine a is 4 fifths. That means that cosine a is going to be 3 fifths. a terminates in quadrant 2, so that's going to be a negative 3 fifths. Let's find cosine b also. Cosine of b. If the sine of b is 3 fifths, the cosine of b is 4 fifths. Since b terminates in quadrant 1, that's a positive number. Okay, so I can continue to simplify this. This is going to be plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine b, 4 fifths, all divided by 2. That's 5 fifths minus 4 fifths is 1 fifth, divided by 2 is 1 tenth. So I end up with, uh, let's see, what do I have right here? One-tenth. Cosine of A is three-fifths. Oops, what did I do? Put in four-fifths. Cosine of A is three-fifths. Five-fifths minus three-fifths is two-fifths. Divided by two is one-fifth. So I get one over square root five. And I have the plus or minus sign here. A is in quadrant two, so A over two is going to end up in quadrant one. So I'm going to choose that plus sign right here. So this is a plus one over square root five. So plus 1 over square root 5. Now, I can do the same kind of inequality problem I did on the previous problem to show that a over 2 is in quadrant 1. But if a is in quadrant 2, a goes from 90 degrees up to 180 degrees. If I divide those by 2, I get an angle that goes from 45 degrees to 90 degrees, which means it terminates in quadrant 1. Let's look at our next problem. Secant 2a, I'm going to write that as 1 over cosine 2a. Cosine 2a, I have three different formulas that I can use. It uh, doesn't make any difference. Let's try the one, uh, how about 1 over 2 cosine squared a minus 1. Now, 2 cosine squared, that's 2 times. Cosine of a is three, negative 3 fifths squared is 9 20 fifths minus 1. So let's see, what have we got here? 18 20 fifths minus 25 20 fifths. So that should be um, 7 25ths. So I'm going to have here 18 25ths minus 25 25ths. So that's negative 7 25ths. I have 1 over that, so negative 25 sevenths. OK, that's what I get for that answer. Now let's look for a formula for cosine of b over 2. So again, plus or minus square root 1 plus cosine b all over 2. 
plus or minus, let's see, b terminates in quadrant 1, so b over 2 also terminates in quadrant 1. I'll choose the plus sign here. And let's see, I get square root of 1 plus cosine of b is 4 fifths. I'll divide it by 2. 5 fifths plus 4 fifths, that's 9 fifths, divided by 2 is 9 tenths. Square root of 9 tenths, so I get 3 over square root 10 for that answer. 3 over the square root of 10, and is that right? That's right. Okay, our next problem, we want to find the sine of a plus b. Let's take a look at that. Sine of a plus b, we know from a couple of sections ago, is going to be sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So sine of a, I know, is 4 fifths. Cosine of b is 4 fifths plus cosine of a is going to be negative 3 fifths and sine of b is 3 fifths. Now I won't do the rest of the arithmetic on that but you can see I'll multiply these two fractions and then add that to the product of these two fractions and simplify it. Looks like I'm going to get 16 20 fifths minus 9 20 fifths should be real easy to work with. The last problem that I want to do is a graphing problem. It's going to start with a half angle formula or a form of a half angle formula. We'll change it into something where we can graph by looking at amplitude and period and, and maybe some um, addition of y coordinates. Let's take a look. I want to graph y equals 4 sine squared x over 2. So this is an exponent right here, sine squared x over 2. I don't want you to confuse it for two, with 2x. Two okay, so what I'm going to do is going to take this and write it as 4 times plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine x all over 2 quantity squared because the sine of x over 2 is this expression and I have that squared so I'll put the 2 out here. Well if I square either the positive square root or the negative square root in either case I get a positive result I have 4 times 1 minus cosine x over 2 Divide this 2 into this 4, I get 2 times 1 minus cosine x. So I want to graph this function, y equals 2 minus 2 cosine x. So I'll do it this way. I'll graph a cosine curve with an amplitude of 2. The negative sign means I'll reflect it about the y-axis, about the x-axis, and then I'll move it up 2 units to take care of this 2 right here. So I'm going to first graph 2 cosine, then I'm going to reflect it, then I'm going to move it up 2. Let's take a look. <clears throat> so cosine x, 2 cosine x would look like this. It would start at 2, go down to uh, 0, down to negative 2, back up to 0, and then back up to 2, like this. That would be the graph of y equals 2 cosine x. Now, if I multiply all of these y values by a negative 1, that's negative 1 times 2 cosine x, they reverse. So I'm going to get a curve that looks like this. Now, I want to take this curve, the second curve that I've drawn, and move it up 2 units. So where it was at negative 2, now it will be at 0. Where it was at 0, it'll be at 2. And where it was at 2, it's going to be up to 4, back down to 2 and then finally down to zero. So that curve, that I, the graph that I want, is going to look something like this. Now, what I'd like to do is take um, this and just graph it real quickly on the graphing calculator to make sure that we have the correct curve. So let's go to the graphing calculator now and take a look. Okay, let's take a look here and see what I've got for my y variables. Okay, you can see first I've got 4 times the quantity sine x over 2, and then I close the second parentheses squared. So that's my first function. Now, my second function, I've got 2 minus 2 cosine x. That's the one that I said was equal to the first one. Okay, so now let's go to our window. I'm going to graph between 0 and 2 pi in increments of pi over 2. y is going to go between negative 3 and 5 in increments of 1. So let's take a look at the graph. You can see that that looks very similar to the graph that I drew on the paper over there. I wait for the second function to graph, and you see it's just retracing that first graph. So I do have the correct graph, and I did the algebra correctly. So you, you can see, by using this graphing calculator, I've just really confirmed my, both the algebra that I did over here and the graphing that I did. 
So the graph that I got on the graphing calculator is very similar to this one right here. And if I use the same dimensions here that I had on the graphing calculator, of course, they would look exactly the same. So there's a look at some uh, half-angle formulas.